Senator Patterson. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. One can only assume that the Labor Party settled on their topic for today, moved by Senator Cameron no less, before opening Melbourne's Herald Sun newspaper this morning. Because had they done so, they might have appreciated the irony of accusing others of being divided, uh, particularly given the starring role that Senator Cameron himself played in that newspaper article. Uh, for those playing at home who haven't read the journalism of Mr Rob Harris this morning, uh, he helpfully detailed the profound and deep divisions within the Labor Party on the question of trade and, in particular, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, not only uh, was Mr Harris able to go inside the Labor caucus and recount in some detail uh, the exchanges between Labor colleagues over a profound issue of national importance, and that is free trade. He was helpfully able to do so relying on effectively a transcript of the proceedings, a transcript so detailed that it was able to recount exactly what each member of the Labor uh, caucus and including shadow ministry had to say on the TPP. This is a party which is self-evidently hopelessly divided on a key question. We had front benches getting up and speaking against each other on a major policy issue. On the one hand, you have people like Jason Clare, uh, the, the shadow uh, trade minister, uh, speaking in favour, uh, Senator Penny Wong, uh, the opposition's leader here in the Senate, backing him up. But on the other hand, you had Senator Doug Cameron apparently moving a motion to recommit the debate that they apparently resolved last week in their caucus again this week to re-debate and re-examine the issue. Uh, so I, I presume uh, that the Opposition Tactics Committee in the Senate uh, hasn't got their subscription to the Herald Sun up to date. They haven't been receiving their papers in the morning. I can only encourage you uh, to make sure that you are reading Melbourne's biggest selling newspaper before you settle on your questions uh, or, or your MPI topics. Um, of course, this is a political party which only a few months ago had an alternative leader in Mr Albanese openly trailing his coat for the Labor leadership. In the lead-up to the by-elections in Longman and Braddon uh, and elsewhere, uh, Mr Albanese was helpfully uh, posing for uh, nice photos for newspapers, uh, granting uh, tell-all interviews uh, about his personal story uh, and background, and openly flaunting and showing his wares uh, for all of his colleagues to see. Uh, this is a party that, were it not for Fortunately for them, uh, some slightly better than expected results in the by-elections would be now in the midst of a serious debate about their own leadership and may yet be again, because we know they have a track record in this area. By contrast, uh, the Liberal national government, our government, is not only governing for all Australians, it is actually delivering for all Australians. Uh, this is a government which, before the 2013 election, promised uh, that we would deliver more than one million new jobs in our first two terms of office. We promised that we would do that. And when we did so at the time, we were told by Labor, uh, by others in the media, that that was a fanciful promise, that was a ridiculous promise. There's no way we could ever meet it. Well, not only have we met uh, that task, not only did we meet that task early, we've in fact comfortably exceeded that task with now 1,114,500 new jobs created under this government. That's more than one million lives changed for the better because of the successful policies of this government implemented while we're governing for all Australians. More than half of those jobs have been full-time. Uh, almost 350,000 of those jobs were created in the 2017-18 financial year alone. This was the most jobs created in any financial year since 2004-05, back in the glory days of the Howard government. And of these jobs, more than 100,000 were jobs for young Australians, and that is the most for any year on record. That's 100,000 young people's lives who've been improved for the better, who are getting a good start in life, who are getting their first step on the rung of the ladder of opportunity, which those opposite used to talk about, uh, thanks to the policies of this government. According to the figures released by the ABS, 2017 was the first full year in which employment rose every single month <coughs> since the ABS began collecting that data in 1978. 
Now, this didn't just happen by accident. This didn't happen just by coincidence. This happened because a series of policies implemented by the Liberal National Government over the past five years that were deliberately aimed at creating employment and creating opportunities for Australians. It's resulted in uh, an economy growing at 3.4 per cent, higher than at any time since 2012 at the height of the mining boom. Under this Liberal National Government, uh, it, our economy is growing at a faster rate than many of the world's largest advanced economies, including Canada, Germany, France, Italy, the UK and Japan. And it's the direct result of the policies that we put in place. For example, uh, the first and vital uh, important stages of our enterprise tax plan. We have legislated a 5 per cent cut in company tax for all Australian businesses with a turnover of up to $50 million. This will deliver the lowest small business tax rate in half a century. And it's already benefiting more than 3.3 million businesses, which between them employ about 7 million Australians. Even more businesses and even more Australians working for those businesses would have benefited if it wasn't for the opposition of the Labor Party and the Greens in this chamber. And sadly, even those businesses which have benefited from this uh, reduction in tax and those workers and shareholders of those businesses and those customers of those businesses who have benefited from their, uh, this new opportunity presented, uh, that is under grave threat. It is under grave threat if Mr Bill Shorten and his Labor team win the next election because we know they're planning to substantially reverse those tax cuts for small businesses. It hasn't only happened because of our small business tax cut plan. It's also happened because we've restored the rule of law on the building, in the building and construction industry. We've re-established the Australian Building and Construction Commission. We've established the Registered Organisations Commission, and together they are cracking down on the wanton lawlessness in that industry, perpetuated by some unions, in particular the CFMEU. And again, this is at threat if Mr Shorten uh, becomes Prime Minister. It's also because of our free trade agenda, a comprehensive free trade agenda that we don't just talk about on this side of the chamber, but we actually deliver, in stark contrast to the previous Labor government, which liked to talk so much about its embrace of a multi Multilateral trade agenda, but never actually delivered anything tangible. We've delivered uh, free trade agreements with our most significant trading partners, uh, not only uh, China, but also Korea, uh, Japan, uh, Peru, uh, and of course uh, the one we we're talking about earlier, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership with 11 major nations. The, the very same Trans-Pacific Partnership that the opposition advised us to abandon. Uh, Mr Shorten, Mr Clare and others said that it was a dead agreement, that there was no hope that once the United States pulled out it would not proceed. Well, how wrong that advice was and how lucky it was that this government, and particularly our previous Trade Minister Stephen Chobo, did not follow that advice. How lucky it was that they continued to prosecute that trade agreement, now being successfully signed and I hope soon successfully legislated through this chamber. Thank you, Senator Patterson.